Some Christian thinkers have been influenced by evolution to the point where they're questioning the Genesis account of creation. Were Adam and Eve real people? This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Matt Boddy. Now this week on Creation Magazine Live, our topic is, were Adam and Eve real people? Mm -hmm. There are people who, who self-label as Christians who would answer yes, and an influential number of others who say no. Now today we're going to provide some clarity on that issue so that you can make an informed decision or at least learn more about the fact that yes, Adam and Eve existed. <laughs> Yes, of course, Adam and Eve existed. Yes. You know, just because a Christian has an opinion about what the Bible says doesn't mean that their opinion is right. I mean, yeah. Christians don't determine truth. Truth exists completely apart from what people think. Yes. So the goal for Christians is to align their beliefs and behavior with the revealed truth. A Christian's worldview is rooted in God's revealed truth in the Bible. That's right, yeah. And the specific truth that we're going to tackle on today's show is the existence of a real historical Adam and Eve from which all people who've ever lived on this planet have descended. Now, we're going we're gonna to outline in, in the short time that we have here some reasons why Adam and Eve must be real people. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's start with the attacks on the historical Adam. Now, in the past few years, those have come primarily from uh, an organization called BioLogos that promotes the idea that evolution is how God got us, got us here. So, right. I mean, they teach that, you know, the Big Bang is true, that life on Earth came from non-living chemicals, uh, there have been millions of years of terrible disease that killed billions of creatures, and eventually, ape-like creatures turned into humans. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what's so dangerous about this organization is that it's led by people who call themselves evangelical Christians. Yes, yeah, and because of that, many Christians turn off their, their discernment detector mm -hmm. and, uh, and get deceived by the statements they make. Yet the things they, they, they say are completely opposed to what the Bible teaches. Right. For example... Francis Collins, uh, he was the director of the Human Genome Project years ago and is currently serving as the director of the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. So, so he, he's no lightweight in science. Right. He said, anatomically modern humans emerged from primate ancestors perhaps 100,000 years ago, long before the Genesis time frame, and originated with a population that numbered something like 10,000, not two individuals. Does that shock you? Like, according to him, humans did not come from Adam and Eve, as the Bible clearly says. Right. And to clarify this issue further, an article in Christianity Today reported, in a recent pro-evolution book from Intervarsity Press, The Language of Science and Faith, Collins and co-author Carl W. Giberson escalate matters, announcing that, unfortunately, the concepts of Adam and Eve as the literal first couple and the ancestors of all humans simply do not fit the evidence. The evidence, yeah, <laughs> not all the evidence, the evidence he prefers, but uh, at, at a university address, Collins said, there's no way you can develop this level of variation between us from one or two ancestors. Okay, so here he gives what he thinks is a reason for rejecting the clear biblical teaching that all people come from Adam and Eve. Yeah, and actually he's wrong scientifically too. It's true, yeah. If you consider Y chromosome yeah. Adam and, uh, and mitochondrial Eve. Yeah. Now, we're not going to focus on the genetic data today, but if you want details on that, see the article, The Non-Mythical Adam and Eve Refuting Errors by Francis Collins and Biologos. It's written by uh, our geneticist, Dr. Rob Carter, and it's available at creation.com slash biologos dash Adam. Yeah, it's a good article. Now, Collins seems to have made a huge mistake in genetics, and the data actually contradicts his claim that we cannot come from two people. I mean, scientifically, yes, all the variations seen today between people groups can and did come from two people. That's right. And since God's word, properly interpreted, will be supported by current and future scientific discoveries, since it records how everything came into existence, but that's not even the point. <laughs> right. Even if uh, the current scientific data made it very difficult to understand how people could come from two individuals, 
that doesn't give us license to throw yeah. out scripture. You know, we got to just be patient and science will catch up. Exactly, yeah. Uh, there are a number of reasons why Adam and Eve must be real historical people. For example, throughout the Bible, they're referred to as real people. Jesus and Paul believed they were real people, and they didn't hesitate to base key doctrines like the gospel, do gospel doctrines, on what Genesis tells us about Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the church fathers and the reformers, they understood that Genesis was real history. Yeah. And that includes, that includes Adam and Eve being real historical people. Real people, yeah. Genesis 1 is written as a historical account of actual people and events. Hebrew scholar Dr. Stephen Boyd did a computer analysis of the different verb types in Hebrew poetry, and Genesis 1 matches narrative, not poetry, right. with a 99.997% .99 probability. Wow. <laughs> okay, we'll look at more at reasons why uh, Adam and Eve must be real historical people after a short break. If you have ever tried to knuckle walk on all fours like a gorilla, you'd soon realize that it's difficult to do. But some apes do this with ease, partly because they have specialized wrist joints, which we don't have. Australopithecus afarensis, also known as Lucy, is an ape-like creature that some claim is our ancestor. Evolutionary books show pictures of Lucy walking upright, so you wouldn't expect her to have knuckle walking wrist joints. But recently, scientists were shocked to discover this wrist joint structure structure in Lucy's kind. According to one of the researchers, I walked over to the cabinet, pulled out Lucy and shazam! She had the morphology that was classic for knuckle walkers. If Lucy really is our ancestor who walked upright, why does her wrist anatomy suggest she walked on all fours? It just does not add up. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website creation.com. If you just tuned in, this week we're talking about a historical Adam. We've just outlined some reasons why, yes, he must be historical, not just a metaphor or an, or an allegory for something else. Uh, another reason is, that, is, is the genealogies in mm. Matthew and Luke that link Jesus to many other real people going all the way back to Adam. Yeah, that's right. If Adam is just a metaphor and there was no physical Adam, at which point do the genealogies, uh, do the real people turn into metaphors? Into <laughs> metaphors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, the reason the geneal genealogies are different is because Matthew's genealogy traces the line through Joseph back to David through his son Solomon, whereas Luke's uh, genealogy, beginning with Mary, goes back through David's son Nathan. Uh, the gene genealogies, by the way, they trace all sorts of adoptive relationships as well as biological ones. That's right, yeah. Another massive problem, if Adam wasn't historical, has to do with the doctrine of original sin. Way back in the mid-400s A.D., a long time ago, there was a major controversy in the church known today as Pelagianism. Pelagius, the man who ignited the controversy, denied that Adam's sin resulted in any guilt or corruption to the rest of the human race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pelagianism said that human will must be totally free and not inclined to good or evil, right. or else our choices can't be free. And if our choices aren't free, then it would be unfair for God to hold us responsible for what we do. Uh, but Pelagianism inevitably results in the purest form of work salvation. Right. Because the more you magnify the importance of the human will, the more you magnify the importance of the human works. It works, yeah. Deny the fallenness of humanity, and you have, in effect, denied the need for divine grace. Yes. If we're yeah. not hopelessly in bondage to our sin, then we really don't need God's grace. We just need to you know, have stronger willpower to make better decisions. Yeah, that's right. And, and that sounds nice to some, but it's not the way the Bible describes people. Right. We sin because we're sinners, and no amount of willpower can make you sinless. Right. Uh, the Council of Ephesus back in 431 condemned Pelagianism as utterly heretical. So did the Council of Orange in 529. Here's the point. If denying that Adam's sin resulted in all of his descendants inheriting a sin nature from him is already heretical, then how much more heretical, if, if there's degrees to it, is denying Adam's existence entirely? <laughs> <laughs> right. The idea that a real historical Adam never existed commits the same heresy as Pelagianism. Yes. And the reason that this was condemned as heresy is because it presents what the Apostle Paul calls a different gospel. A different gospel. You know, he warns the Galatians about, about this when he, they seem to have been influenced by serious falsehoods about salvation. Um, Paul says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting 
him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Those are some pretty strong words there from the Apostle Paul about modifying gospel truth. Pelagianism is a serious modification of gospel truths, and it's been condemned as heresy. Uh, And and you can see why people today have have bought into the whole evolutionary idea and are trying to blend it into Scripture. That would require a serious modification of gospel truths also. You can see the the folks who want to do that struggle with getting rid of a historical Adam. Yeah, yeah, of course, because you have to. <laughs> if you really believe yes. that God's method of so-called creating the universe looks exactly like atheistic evolution, then there's no room for a historical Adam. No, there's no room for a historical Adam. Uh, even if the folks who associate with biologos and believe in evolution, like Tim Keller, for example, Keller says, Paul most definitely wanted to teach us that Adam and Eve were real historical figures. When you refuse to take a biblical author literally, when he clearly wants you to do so, you've moved away from the traditional understanding of biblical authority. Those are good words there by by Keller. Uh, If Adam doesn't exist, Paul's whole argument that both sin and grace work covenantally falls apart. You can't say that Paul was a man of his time, but we can accept his basic teaching about Adam. If you don't believe what he teaches about Adam, you are denying the core of Paul's teaching. Hmm. Yeah, you, you can see the struggle there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he believes in evolution, but there's this great hesitation on giving up of the historical Adam. That's right, yeah. But, but he has to if he wants to keep that evolutionary history. Right. It came, came from yeah. eight people, not Adam. Right. Yes, now others state the problem very plainly. A physicist John Bloom, director of Biola University's Science and Religion program. Uh, now, Biola is a Christian university, by the way. But he says... If there was merely a population of pre-Adamic hominids that collectively evolved into modern man, then theological foundation for the nuclear family, sin and death, appears to be eroded. The credibility of the Bible when it speaks on these issues seems to be damaged. Mm. If it does not correctly explain the origin of a problem, why should one trust its solutions? Yeah, exactly. There you go. So he's right about that, of course, and we need more Christian professors like Dr. Bloom and universities like Biola that will take a stand that Adam was historical. Right, yeah, and there's, there's many that don't. And you, you got to admit that when evolution is promoted in most schools and then popular pastors are saying that it's okay to add it into the Bible, people think, well, that, that must be a logical, defensible position. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but there are well over 10,000 articles on creation.com, and many of them written by scientists, researchers, and theologians that show how the latest scientific discoveries support the biblical account of a recent creation in six Earth rotation days, followed by a global flood. That's right, yeah. And in addition, there's a mountain of scientific evidence against evolution. <laughs> no, the idea that Adam was not historical is not a logical and defensible position. Both scripture and science point to Adam as a real individual from which all people came. Yeah, that's right. And and consider that many atheists cite evolution as a huge factor in rejecting Christianity. Uh, You gotta wonder how many people are being led astray by these falsehoods that are being pumped into the churches. Well, we're gonna take a break and then we'll be right back and we'll discuss more details about Adam in the gospel. The vigorous promotion of evolution as established fact is causing many Christians to question the biblical creation account. And some non-Christians won't consider Christianity because they believe the Bible has been disproved by science. That's where Creation Magazine comes in. Creation Magazine is a family-friendly publication packed with cutting-edge science that supports the Bible, presented in an easy-to-understand format by some of the leading experts in their fields of study. Visit creation.com to subscribe today. Okay, on this week's episode, we are discussing whether Adam and Eve were real people. Yes, they were. And of course, the answer is yes. (laughs) Uh, There are articles at creation.com that explain how we can get the variety uh, in humans from two people. And then the population was bottlenecked down to eight people at the time of the flood. Right. Uh, And genetics supports this. Uh, Ancient history supports this. In fact, scientific observations support the entire creation account without the need to modify the biblical text. Right, yeah. We could even uh, get a comment from an atheist, from Richard Dawkins, for example, about getting rid of a historical Adam. 
Um, some people who want to blend evolution with the Bible have gone down the road of saying that, well, maybe Adam is symbolic, right? Not historical. And maybe, maybe that way we could avoid the destruction of the gospel that comes with the rejection of historical Adam. Dawkins makes quick work of that. And he says this, Oh, but of course the story of Adam and Eve was only ever symbolic, wasn't it? Symbolic? So in order to impress himself, Jesus had himself tortured and executed in vicarious punishment for a symbolic sin committed by a non-existent individual? As I said, barking mad as well as viciously unpleasant. <laughs> so even Dawkins recognizes the need for a historical Adam if yes. the Bible's true. Yeah. You know, he made another interesting statement during an interview on Re uh, Revelation TV in the UK about people who try to fit evolution with Christianity. Have a look. Something that you read or an experience you had that sort of said, yeah, this is it. God doesn't exist. Oh, well, by far the most important, I suppose, was understanding evolution. Um, I think the evangelical Christians have really sort of got it right in a way in seeing uh, evolution as the enemy. Um, Whereas the more, what should we say, sophisticated theologians who are quite happy to live with evolution, I think they're deluded. And I think the, I think the evangelicals have got it right uh, in that there really is a deep incompatibility between evolution and Christianity. And I think I realized that at the age of about 16. <laughs> nice terminology, isn't it? Right. The, the more sophisticated theologians. Dawkins, who understands evolution very well, and, and who understands enough about Christianity, he sees the incompatibility between evolution and Christianity better than some popular theologians today. Sad. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, and of course, Dawkins isn't the only atheist who sees the incompatibility between evolution and Christianity. Right, yeah. Um, in a debate between William Lane Craig and atheist Frank Zindler back in the 90s, Zindler understood the importance of a literal historical Adam and Eve as the foundation of Christianity. Now, this atheist understood the links between Genesis and the gospel more clearly than a lot of theologians do today. You know, he said, The most devastating thing, though, that biology did to Christianity was the discovery of biological evolution. Now that we know that Adam and Eve never were real people and the central myth of Christianity is destroyed, if there never was an Adam and Eve, there never was an original sin. If there never was an original sin, there's no need for salvation. If there's no need for salvation, there's no need of a savior. And I submit that puts Jesus, historical or otherwise, into the ranks of the unemployed. I think that evolution is absolutely the death knell of Christianity. Yeah, and he's absolutely right. That's right, yeah. But yet he's wrong, because he's an atheist. Well, he's, <laughs> yes, right, yeah. He's, but, but he's being consistent. If there wasn't a literal garden and a literal Adam and a literal fruit and a literal Eve and a literal fall, then we don't literally need a savior. He gets it. Yeah, yeah. He, he's arguing that uh, evolution is true, and so we didn't come from Adam and Eve. Well, right. well, then the logical next step is that the central teaching of Christianity, the gospel, must also fall. Right, yeah. Meanwhile, at Biologos, they're also teaching that evolution is true and that all people did not come from Adam and Eve. Atheists can see what that does to Christianity, but the folks at Biologos, I mean, it, it's, it's like a child who's found his dad's gun, right? They don't understand that it's, it's going to blow their head off, literally the head of the human race and the rest of Christianity with it. Yeah. yeah. You see, in the Bible, Paul highlights the connection between Adam and Christ when he explains what salvation is all about. Uh, he gives Jesus a nickname, the last Adam. The last Adam, yeah. yeah. Now, both the first Adam and the last Adam are vital to the gospel, but how exactly? Well, there are many points of comparison, and we can highlight some of those, but it goes without saying that since the last Adam, Jesus, was a real historical figure, then so was the first Adam. First Adam, yes. So let's list the comparisons between the two and highlight, as Paul did, the importance of both of them being real historical people. Firstly, they both had miraculous beginnings. Uh, the Bible tells us that the first man, Adam, was created by God in his image, in his likeness, directly from the dust of the ground. God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Uh, so he wasn't the product of some form of theistic evolution. God didn't make him uh, in the image or likeness of an ape uh, by any long mutational process. God created Adam as an immediate act sometime on day six of creation week. And while Adam was made in the image of God, Christ is the image of the invisible God, yes. according to Colossians 1.15. Uh, 
You know, the Bible tells us that the last Adam, Jesus Christ, was the one through whom God created all things. So Jesus was pre-existent with God the Father mm -hmm. and God the Holy Spirit before Adam lived. Uh, but in his humanity, he too had a miraculous beginning when he was incarnated as a human being, yeah. conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Yes. Now we'll continue with that comparison and, and highlight the importance of a real historical Adam after a short break. Don't you find it strange that when people go blind, we regard it as tragic? But when cave-dwelling fish go blind, it's hailed as evolution in action. There are cave-dwelling fish with a mutational defect that causes them to have scar tissue where they would normally have eyes. Usually, this is an obvious disadvantage, but in a totally dark cave, eyes are not necessary. In fact, it's actually a benefit not to have eyes because they are delicate and easily injured by sharp rocks. So, blind cave-dwelling fish are better suited to that environment. But is this really a legitimate example of evolution? Evolution is meant to explain how new DNA information arose to turn non-sighted creatures into sighted creatures. But in the case of blind cavefish, we have actually witnessed devolution because the information for eyes has been corrupted and lost. Once again, evolution goes in the wrong direction. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Okay, our subject this week is, were Adam and Eve real people? Mm. Okay, we just introduced the first point of a list comparing the first Adam with the last Adam, uh, that they both had miraculous beginnings. Yes, the second point we could make is, both were perfect, innocent, and holy. Adam was created a perfect man in full possession of all human faculties and with a God consciousness enabling him to have spiritual communion with God. Initially innocent, sinless, and holy, he was in a right relationship to God, to women, to himself, and to the natural world around him. Yeah, uh, this last Adam, Jesus, uh, was also perfectly man, one with God, innocent, sinless, and holy. Uh, by the way, some people, they call Jesus Christ the second Adam, but mm -hmm. the term isn't found in the Bible. Right. Uh, there won't be a third or others. Uh, there's only the first and the last. Now, unlike the first Adam, the Lord Jesus was divine, having the attributes, offices, entitlements, and, and names of deity. Uh, and since he's fully God, he's worthy of worship. That's right. Thirdly, we could say that both our humanity's head. Adam was the head of the human race. Jesus Christ is the head of redeemed humanity. In other words, he's the head of the church. As Ephesians 5.23 says, since Christ died once for all time, and we read that in Hebrews chapter 7, 9, and 10, there will never be another need for another Adam. Hence, he is the last Adam. Okay, fourthly, they are both givers of life. Mm -hmm. The first Adam gave life to all his descendants. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, com communicates life and light to all men and gives eternal life to those who receive him yes. and believe on his name, giving them the power to become the sons of God. Now we read that in uh, the first 14 verses of the Gospel of John. Yes, nice. Fifthly, both were rulers. Adam, representing mankind, was given dominion over the created world. After being raised from the dead, Jesus Christ was elevated to the right hand of God and given dominion over all things, which were put under his feet, the Bible says. The first Adam was Lord over a limited domain, the last Adam, Lord of all. Okay, number six, a deep sleep produces a beautiful bride. Yes. Genesis 2, 21-23 tells us that God put Adam into a deep sleep, during which time God made Adam's bride Eve from Adam's side. A wound in Adam's side produced a bride. Mm -hmm. Note that once, once again, theistic evolution is excluded. Right. The text says that God made them male and female at the beginning. If Adam and Eve had been subhuman before God breathed life into them, uh, they would have already been male and female without right. the need for God to have made them so at this stage. That, that's right, yeah. Uh, after the last Adam, Jesus, died on the cross, suffering the sleep of death for everyone, and his side was pierced by a spear thrust, in his death... He paid the penalty for mankind's sins. Those who repent and put their faith in Him are united with Christ in a relationship that the Bible likens to that of a bride toward her husband. So, a wound in the last Adam's side also produced a bride, just like the first Adam. Uh, the true church is this bride, and that, the Bible describes the bride as a glorious bride, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and, and holy and without blemish. Okay, number seven. Both had a significant testing. Yes. 
you know, at the beginning of Adam's life, he underwent a period of testing as to whether or not he would obey God. Genesis 2, 16 to 17 records, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. All right, at the beginning of the last Adam's ministry, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted or tested by the devil. Mm -hmm. So there, there are quite a number of uh, comparisons that we can make between right. the two Adams. And we'll cover just a few more after a short break. Creation Ministries International edifies the body of Christ by providing more than 30 years of Bible-supporting scientific research, delivered through speaking engagements, books, magazines, and a variety of media, much of which is archived on our website, creation.com. Did you know that if you read three articles on creation.com each day, it would take over seven years to read them all? Such a wealth of information didn't arise by chance, however. We do this through the faithful prayers and gifts of our supporters, which also fund ongoing research. Support the building up of the church by partnering with CMI. Donate today at creation.com slash donate. Welcome back. Today we're exploring the question, were Adam and Eve real people? And you know, we really shouldn't have to do a show on this topic. For Christians, it should be an open and shut case, yeah. right? Yes, they were historical. But today, there are teachers who are unfortunately very influential who are causing confusion about this topic. Now, let's continue by looking at some of the areas where the first and last Adam are different. Okay, so number eight, a great failure and a great victory. Yeah. You know, the first Adam failed the test and in doing so involved all humanity in his defeat dragging the human race down with him. And as a result, in Adam, we all stand condemned, spiritually bankrupt, enslaved to sin, and expelled from paradise. That's right. The last Adam, Jesus, was victorious over sin, the flesh, and the devil. As a result, in Christ, believers stand justified and redeemed, spiritually wealthy, liberated from sin, and included in the paradise of God. Okay, number nine, disobedience versus obedience. The first Adam disobeyed God, the last Adam was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's right. Number 10, judgment and death. The first Adam experienced the judgment of God. He ultimately died and his body turned to dust. Because of his sin, death came upon all men, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Okay, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, also died. Uh, he died on the cross to atone for sin, but he didn't stay dead, nor did his body see corruption. On the third day, he rose again, overcoming the power of death and bringing a resurrection to life to all who believe. Yes. The bottom line is a historical Adam is critical to Christianity. Yeah. Trying to get rid of Adam because you want to replace the Genesis creation account with evolution results in destruction of all Christianity. That's right. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, has the show helped you understand more about science and the true history of the Bible? Send us a note through our feedback section at creation.com. Yeah, or check out our uh, magazine, Creation Magazine. You can see a free copy at creation.com slash free mag. That's right. See you next week. And remember, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. And science supports scripture.